Here we go with five brilliant moves from Anish Giri. Of course, we know him as the world's best or most prepared player, also for the draw memes, but definitely right now in this video for the brilliant moves. Definitely pay attention. This first one is up against Yana Pomniachi, the world championship challenger, second time, by the way. He's been there twice, so he's on to something. But let's see what Anish Giri was able to do in this game. Here's example number one. Anish Giri is playing black. Now, of course, in this position, very, very easy, right? It's black to move. Of course, we make a move, rook takes b4. It makes total sense if we do a piece count now. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns versus one, two, three, four, five. Black's up a pawn. We're trying to convert that pawn. Knight versus bishop in game. The knight's very, very strong on the square that it's on. So king to g2, sort of a waiting move. Black doing the same, making some looks for the king. Rook to a1, and then rook a4. Hey, trade when you're up, not when you're down, right? Very simple process. Rook to e1. Oh, hey, you don't want to trade? Perfect. We're going to take the second rank away from you, right? So, or at least put a rook on the seventh or the second rank here. Put some pressure here. Now, the queen needs to move. Queen goes to, here we go, f4. Queen f4. That's a big boy move for a big fella. Of course, as you're attacking e5. If f6, maybe queen takes d4. There are lots of things that can happen here, but that's up to you to find this move right here. Pause the video if you need to. Is black to move? What did Anish do in this position? Here we go, guys. Brilliant move. Here it is. You ready for it? Rookie two. Oh my goodness. Did you even see that? Did you even see that? And I, I didn't either, right? Of course, rook e2. Jan didn't either, okay? Rook to e2 is a very, very strong move. Wow. What does it do? It blocks, of course, if rook takes e2, which is actually what happened in the game, but just to see what happens on, obviously, bishop takes e2. Well, of course, come on now. This is a family channel. Pawn takes the queen, and that is mean. GG, start a new game. Knight takes bishop is coming. We just won a, a, a queen there, like a um, free queen, basically, in a way. So game's over. Not good. So, of course, uh, rook takes e2 is what happened in the game. Now, after rook takes e2, knight takes e2. Again, if bishop takes, you're going to hang your whole queen on national television here. Not going to happen. So queen e4, knight to c3. And Anish was able to convert this in game. So now let's move through some moves here because there is uh, lots of moves left. So uh, g6, h5, g takes h5, queen c8, right? Of course, uh, we're still up some pawns, so we're going to actually just go and convert this is what happened. Queen f6, there's lots of moves, right? So we're just going to blow through them here. But uh, Anish was able to convert this in game after finding, of course, back here is a very, very nice move after queen to f4. Rook to e2, and what do you do? That's a brilliant move for my Anish Gary. This is number one. Let's move to the second one. Here we are with number two, guys. This is Anish Giri versus his second, if you didn't know, Vidit Gujarati. Of course, uh, Vidit is his second. So when he's preparing, Vidit is actually preparing as well. Like, it's actually pretty cool to see this. And some some of you don't even know that. So that that's uh, really cool information. Now, of course, what's even cooler is what happened in this game. All right. So uh, last move from Black from Vidit was Rook A to D8. After Rook A to D8, uh, Anish goes with queen f3, a very easy move to make. Now, if we look at this, the bishop is also uh, annoying here. It's a very strong bishop. This actually came out of an e4, e5 opening. Joko Piano, uh, Italian game-ish, right? So queen goes to f3. We're threatening stuff like knight takes h6 or bishop takes h6. The knight is, is it's kind of weird. Where do you move it? Um, black's already in trouble, by the way. If knight h7, I mean, there's even a knight h5, which is extremely strong. These knights are looking very, very scary here. But, of course, nevertheless, you have to make a move. And Vidit shows knight takes d5 with the tactical complication, saying that if you take the knight, I obviously am going to take on e1. Now, of course, you do have a queen g4. Maybe you can throw in there. Maybe do you sack on g7? Do you knight takes h6? Well, what do you actually do here? In fact, that's on you to do. Brilliant move. Anish Giri, what do you do? Okay, here's the move. So, in fact, the move is bishop takes h6. <laughs> Rip it off the board. Get the pawn off the board. Bishop takes h6. Not only did we connect the rooks here, because a move ago, they're disconnected. So, of course, this pin that's going on, it actually works right now. But it is right to move after bishop takes h6. Now we defend the rook, so we can also take the knight. If you take on h6, well, start a new game. GG, this is a family channel. Queen g4 check, and then moving anywhere, and queen g7, and mating. Beautiful move. Okay, so what do you actually do? Well, what Vidit played in the game, which is g6, right? So after the g6 move, e takes d5. I take a piece, you take a piece, and now look at your king wide open. Finish it off here, knight h5, bishop d4, right? We don't want any knight f6 check 
queen to f4 attacking the bishop he goes bishop b2 and queen g5 wow ouch nice check there king h7 bishop g7 with threats of this if you take there's mate on g7 i mean there's knight f6 coming at some point so he plays f6 queen h6 check king g8 we take on f6 i mean uh, decisive threats everywhere bishop takes a1 and instead of just taking back with anything i mean you just deliver a check and a resignation on the spot after that ouch that was sweet very big stuff from a big fella anish giri it was very very strong after you see the move uh rook a to d8 queen f3 knight takes d5 bishop takes h6 and that ends the game that was number two let's move on to number three here we go with number three. This is Anish Giri versus Salem A.R. Saleh. He peaked at 2690 fee day. Very, very strong player, obviously. Of course, just right to move here. Pause the video if you need to. Anish Giri on the move. What do you do? Here we go. Well, first, let's take stock. What's going on? We have the two rooks that are doubling on the G file. You have knight takes G6, maybe uh, an eventual sacrifice, or knight takes H5. You have e5, queen c3. I mean, you got so many things that you can do here. And it's very, very scary for the black position with a weak king. But move from Anish here after bishop f7 was e5. Open up the bishop line. This is not a brilliant move. This is just a move you got to play. One of the three moves from the engine, queen d4 and c3 were moves given by the engine as well. e5 was actually super strong though. And it's very practical. It just opens up the bishop. Get your most of your pieces, all your pieces, as many as you can into the attack. So after e5, we're attacking the rook. We're also attacking g6. Cool, perfect. D takes e5 because we kind of have to do that. After d takes e5, well, what do you do next? It's on you. Pause the video. You know what we're going to do here. But how, where, and with what piece? White to move. What do you do? Here it is, right? Okay. I mean, easy move. Knight takes g6. Come on. Easy. We know that's coming next, right? Knight takes g6. Bishop takes g6, right? Okay. And it's on you. This is the brilliant part. This is the brilliant part. Hopefully you got some brilliant moves today. If not, this is going to be your first time to get you a brilliant move on chess.com. It's why to move. What did Anish Giri play in this position right here? Here it is. Are you ready for this? It's brilliant moves. Brilliant moves. So Bishop takes G6, right? Raise your hand. Yep, yep. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Put your hand down. Okay. Rook takes G6, right? Gotta be. Wrong. Put your hand down. You're wrong. In fact, here's the move. Queen h6. What is this? What is that? Oh my goodness. Just look at that for a second. Look at this move. Queen h6. Fancy, huh? Yeah. What happened to all the draw memes, right? Says Anish as he puts queen h6 on the board. Wow. That's a scary move. Very frightening. You forget about all the draw memes after you see a move like that. Queen h6 check is absolutely amazing. Well, let's see what happens. Well, king takes because he kind of has to, really. I mean, he could obviously go king f7. That's just going to prolong it. Rook takes g6. And it's such a beautiful move. <laughs> He's like, yo, bro, I'm just going to let you take Like, hey, man, that's beautiful. King takes. Rook takes g6. Rook takes g6. And you do the honors here. Rook takes g6. And mate, absolutely brilliant. Of course, brilliant moves from Anish Giri. This was number three. Let's move to number four. Okay, guys, here we are with number four. This is Anish Giri versus Shaq Mimidirov and white to move. So right now, let's take stock. Bishop takes f3. Um, it just happened, and the, the rooks are in trouble. But white has some serious conversation. As you see a seriously weak king, you're thinking about sacrifices. You, I mean, bring a rook over. How do we do this? Like, it, it's something here, right? Has to be. Well, of course, you know what time it is. It's on you to figure this one out. Why to move? What did Anish Giri play in this position? Here it is. So first move here is starting with E5 and we live. Open up shop. We need another piece, just like in the, the last one we saw, right? With the pushing and using the bishop line and sacking, right? So of course, he's very cool with this. Uh, he's, he knows he's done this before. He's going to try it again. E5 hitting the knight. Of course, if you do D takes E5, there's lots of problems that can happen. I mean, you can even go bishop C4 check, but bishop takes G6 isn't our, our, our intention. So we probably should go this route. But E5 happens and Shaq goes for the piece cool i'm gonna take the rook because i'm getting rid of something makes logical sense practical right i'm getting rid of one of the pieces that it are that, that's attacking the king like it's the king is being attacked we're gonna get rid of this rook it kind of limits the damage okay after bishop takes h1 well he just took a whole rook from us okay just wanted to tell you that right you're down 
material. Took a whole rook. That was a piece you were using for your attack. What do you do now? White to move. Brilliant move, by the way. White to move. What do you do? Here's the move here. The move is, in fact, Bishop takes g6. I don't care about none of that. I don't care about none of that, says Anishgiri. As he sacks the whole rook, now the bishop. Bishop takes g6. What a move. Gouros. Well, uh, the intention is after, uh, obviously, pawn takes, takes, king h8, rook takes h1. Now we take it back because it's May next move. Ha! <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So Shaq sees this. He's like, that was fancy. Cool stuff. Whatever. Cool story, bro. Bishop back to f3. So he backs up. He moves the bishop back to f3. Next move, e takes f6, eliminating wood defense to mate, which is h7. Got to defend. All right? And there's also mate on g7, by the way, too, as well. So two mates there. Now he defends both of them with one move. Can you spot the next move here? White to move. Once again, pause it if you need to. Can you spot the next one? Here's the next move. The next move is Rook to g1. Very simple move. Quiet. Maybe not that quiet, but quiet enough there to let you know it's not sacrificing or f7. It's just rook to g1. Very nice move. Bishop h7 being a threat. Bishop check here. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of threats. Bishop h5, rook g7, right? Lots of threats. Black plays king h8, right? And with that in mind, I gave you a few moves to look at, right? Some moves to look at. Do we take? Do we move the bishop? Do we move the knight? What do you do here? Of course, a uh, few moves here left. Let's see if you can find this move too. White to move. Here we go. Now, engine gives actually best move is bishop h5 plus 10, actually. Anishis is plus 3. That's a huge difference, but still completely winning practical chances playing a human. The move here is bishop to e4. Now, of course, you could have played bishop h5. You could have played bishop f5, all these other moves. This one actually threatens the bishop. Very strong. And of course, uh, now... Uh, engine wanted bishop h5 but bishop e4 still works and after bishop takes e4 instead of rook to g7 which actually loses to a nasty sequence rook takes f6 ouch oh my goodness if queen takes then queen takes g7 gg start a new game so we back it up instead of rook g7 there's queen to g7 which is much stronger nasty check here and after uh queen takes g7 F takes g7, and there was a resignation right here. But, I mean, the reason being is that after the king moves, I mean, it's easy. You just take the rook, and then you take the knight, and, like, you're just completely winning. I'm up a whole piece here, right? And this is going to be very easy um, for, for Anish to convert. So going back here, in fact, from the beginning, it actually looked like this. Playing e5 first, letting him take the rook. Sacrifice. Bishop takes g6. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Bishop f3. Rook, uh, pawn takes f6. Queen defending. Rook to g1. King out of the way, not being on that line anymore. Bishop to e4, very simple move, takes. And then queen g7, get all the material back and go up a piece in the end. This was very, very beautiful. That was brilliant. Now, let's move on to the final brilliant. Here we go with the last brilliant move. This is Hikaru Nakamura, the man, the myth, the legend, the US chess champion many times, right? Streamer. We all know this guy. Of course, half man, half everything else. And then you have Anishigiri with the black pieces playing this game brilliant moves he played it even against hikaru let's see what happened in this one now of course last move was queen to h4 in this position very very dynamic stuff i mean pawns on f3 this bishop could be extremely strong feels like both kings have some weaknesses and whites might be a little bit safer weirdly enough but what do we do well okay on this says hey i gotta make a threat knight g4 why not say hey, threaten mate let's see if hikaru misses it so after knight g4 rook to f1 he defends f2 which is very smart, of course. We were expecting him to defend the mate. And rook f1 defends it. Nice move. Now we're threading uh, something else. He goes rook f6. So we can put the rook on h6 with some type of threats here. It'd just be annoying. It's also a very nice rook lift. We do have rook h5 in there. But of course, trades may actually help black, especially if we can blockade this pawn. But okay, nevertheless, after rook f6, bishop to c1 from Ikaru here. Bishop c1, allowing queen takes d4 to happen. So he said, I'm going to defend it tactically. Queen takes d4 does happen, in fact. And then tactically, he defends it and says, whatever, bishop e3. My bishop's on a better diagonal now. Well, I mean, maybe we can open up. This is probably the best diagonal to be on because it's the king. But for right now, we just want to make sure your queen goes somewhere and also defend the rook at the same time. So, okay, it's up to you now. But, uh, chat, now it's, you're playing black here. Anish Giri is playing Ikaru. What is the brilliant move here? Can you find it? Here we are. Hikaru Nakamura is even half of a human. Just half. 
After bishop e3, the move here is, in fact, if you found a great job to you, here it is. Knight a2! Oh my goodness! What is he doing? Whoa! That is unreal. This move is just... What is this? It works in every line. Absolutely stunning move to find that one right there. Knight takes f2 is beautiful. In fact, it's brilliant. Knight f2, brilliant move. After knight takes f2, okay, here's a few things that happens. If bishop takes f2, well, this is actually what happened in the game, but let's just show obviously what happens on rook takes f2. If rook takes f2, we do queen d1 and he's done, right? After rook f1, queen takes bishop g1, hitting with the matey pool. What it do there? Pretty nasty stuff. Okay, cool. So what if I move the king? Come on. Now this is a family channel. Queen takes e3, right? This is a smothered mate type stuff. I mean, there's everything here. And, and the rook's hanging too, by the way. Okay, now no good. So bishop f2. Perfect. Show me what you got then. Since it's such a cool move, since it's so brilliant. Well, what's the follow up? Black to move. What do you do? Here it is. Anish Giri finds the follow up. Minus 26 after this move right here. Boom. Queen takes f2. Queen sack for the win. Queen sack for the win. My guy. Beautiful right beautiful now let's try uh, of course uh, if a rook takes queen obviously mate rook g1 doesn't work because queen g1 believe it or not king takes and we can go f2 and then check and check beautiful i mean let's put it on the board here check and then we're mating i mean really everywhere like uh, you're getting walked up king e3 queen e1's actually mate too so mates everywhere very strong stuff so um after after um after bishop takes f2, well, really, it kind of ended here. Bishop takes f2, game's over. Queen takes f2. Last move was actually queen h3, and that's it. Resignation here, but this is over, right? Game could have continued. Queen takes rook, and then this would have been done here. But coming back to where it started was right here after bishop to e3. Nasty move. Knight f2. Hikaru even missed that one, but Giri was able to find it. So, of course, um, this is brilliant. I mean, this is just a super cool stuff to see. Five brilliant moves from... Um, Anish Giri there. Yeah, this is beautiful. Knight f2 and then queen takes and he's he's done for here. Queen takes rook um, will happen afterwards and obviously we're just going to convert that. So this was five brilliance from Anish Giri. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you check the videos right above me or to the side. Guys, we love it and we love you and we'll see you on the next video.